be talking about some technology that um, Dr. Matthew Tata and I have been developing through our spin-off company, Reverb Robotics. And so yeah, we're developing an end-to-end -end platform for speech interaction. And I'll talk about how the platform works and some of the applications for healthcare robotics. So a bit of a background for the company. Um, Matt and I co-founded this company in December, 2018. And he's the CEO and I'm the CTO. And the goal of our company is to develop robotic technologies for auditory awareness and speech interaction. And the need for this company kind of arose out of our realization that there are a lot of options for yeah, vision sensors and other sensors that are really like end to end. So if you picture the Intel RealSense cameras or other types of technology that have both the hardware and the software um, for sensors, um, you can buy lots of stuff right out of the box. But for audio, there isn't as many options. And a lot of these options don't work that well for robotics. So our goal is to develop these end-to-end -end solutions um, so that robotics developers can easily integrate them into their existing robotic systems. So there's a couple unique challenges that we face in robotics. Um, and one of those is space constraints. So a lot of times when you're developing a robot, you might not have that much space on the chassis of the robot or other parts of the robot to place equipment. Um, so these solutions need to be very small as far as the space constraints. And there's also a lot more noise in robotics research than maybe other areas. So um, robots might be operating in noisy environments such as warehouses or other rooms that have lots of distracting talkers and noise. And not only that, but robots themselves produce a lot of noise. So through their actuators and motors and fans, they're always generating lots of interfering sound. And on top of that, there's also connectivity and power issues. So if you picture a robot in a warehouse or out in the world, it might not always have a strong internet connection. Um, and it might need to power everything on its battery as well. So um, this is tricky with speech recognition because most of the existing solutions like Siri and Google Assistant, they're always streaming audio to the cloud and then processing the speech in the cloud. Um, but any sort of solution for robotics should work um, on the device itself. And this will also help with the issues of latency as well by lowering that latency by processing everything on the device. Um, so we've developed both a hardware and software component um, to the solution that we're building at Reverb Robotics. So I'll start by outlining the hardware and then the software side of things. So our initial prototype is based on the Raspberry Pi 4 compute module. So this is basically a small single board computer. Um, and then we've developed a carrier board for that module. Um, so it has a good processor that can handle the speech recognition and all the software. And it'll have an ethernet port um, for connecting to the network that the robot's on as well as wireless from the compute module itself. And for audio, we have um, 3.5 millimeter input and output connection so that you can connect it to a speaker for speech production and stuff like that. And on top of that, we have a couple of I2S microphone ports. So this is gonna allow us to connect to digital microphones and have those microphones external to the board itself. And this is really useful for robotics because you could potentially place the microphones on different locations on the robot and then just run the cables to our board, which is located elsewhere. Um, and it also like helps reduce the amount of space that our technology will take up. So yeah, the dimensions are here. It's basically around seven centimeters by four centimeters. So it's pretty small relative to previous versions of sort of single board computers. And on the software side, we're providing pre-built modules for a lot of different functionality. So streaming raw audio from the device and performing speech recognition on the device itself, and then also natural language understanding. So the speech recognition is what converts the speech to text, but then the natural language understanding is what classifies the intent of the user and then also pulls out certain slots because um, it's the slot filling approach. So an example would be if you ask a robot to hand you an object like robot hand me the bottle, um, it would recognize that the intent is that you want the robot to hand over an object, and then it would parse out that bottle is the object that it needs to hand over. Um, so the, in this way, you can sort of get structured information from that natural language and then trigger um, actions from the robot based on that. And we're also going to have a text-to-speech module. So um, as the board receives text, it can convert that to speech. Um, so 
the example with the COVID robotics delivery bot, um, having it able to talk back to the user um, through the text-to-speech interface, that's the idea yeah. with that module. Um, and all of these modules communicate with each other using Google's gRPC library. And so what this means is that everything can run on the board itself, but if you want to, you can also run other modules on different computers, or you can connect to our board over the network. And we're going to have um, pre-built clients for robot operating system and YARP. So YARP is the platform that the iCub robot uses and lots of European robots use. And then also a C++ client and Python examples um, about how to communicate to the board directly over gRPC. Um, so this is kind of going to provide an end-to-end -end solution for people to quickly integrate um, auditory awareness to their robots. And I thought I would give a quick example of the iCub. So this is what we're developing with the board for the iCub. Um, so it's a good example of how having those external microphones is useful because they, their use case, they need to place the microphones right in each ear of the robot. So this is a backplate for the head that I 3D printed. And then there's just the opening for the microphones there. Um, but then we can run the cable somewhere else in the head. Um, and so that'll really help with their space constraints. So, there's a lot of future features that we're hoping to add that would specifically be useful for healthcare robotics. So as I was talking about before, being able to identify who's talking to the robot um, could be very useful. For example, with the surgery assistant robot, if you're able to have the robot just responding to the surgeon or just a few people who are in charge of controlling it, it'll help reduce confusion and also make sure the robot is um, only doing what it should be doing. Um, and from Sylvan's research, we saw that wearing face masks really affects the speech recognition models. Um, so developing custom speech recognition models that work better um, for people wearing face masks, that's gonna be really useful for the healthcare industry um, where lots of times, especially with the pandemic going on, people are wearing face masks all the time. Um, and we also plan to ship um, specific natural language understanding models with our board so that um, if you're applying your board to a certain domain, such as the rehabilitation robotics, um, you'll just have custom models right out of the box that are a lot more accurate for your specific use cases. Um, so yeah, that's kind of an overview of what we're doing with Reverb Robotics um, and how you can kind of make use of our technology. Um, yeah, I'd like to open the floor to questions again and thank everyone on this list and the different organizations that made it possible.